Hi everybody, this is Steve Grizzetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix.com Guide to Adobe Premiere Elements. And here we are in part six of our eight part basic training for Adobe Premiere Elements. And in this session, I want to talk to you about keyframing. Keyframing is found all over the program and keyframing is the key to kind of higher power with the program, to creating animations, to creating unusual effects, to creating effects that change over time. And once you learn to see keyframing, you're going to see it all over the program. But to demonstrate the basic principles of keyframing, I'm just going to create a pan and zoom over this photo right here. So to create that pan and zoom, I'm going to select the photo here on my timeline. And then I'm going to open my Applied Effects panel, which is the little FX button on the toolbar here that has a pencil next to it. Now the Applied Effects panel is where you make adjustments to any effects you've added to your video or to your audio but there are certain properties that are inherent to your video. So any video or any photo you add to your timeline automatically has properties for opacity and for motion applied to it. And if I toggle open motion, you can see that we can change the position. That's how this picture fits in the video frame and its scale, how large it is. And if we go to the upper right hand corner of applied effects and click on the little stopwatch, it will open up the keyframe controller. This is our workspace for creating keyframe animation. So I'll drag the playhead here to the very beginning of the photo and we'll create our opening shot. Now I'd like to have a wide shot of this photo, which is larger than my video frame right now. So I'm going to drag down scale and zoom back a little bit. Once the photo is small enough, you can actually click on it here in the monitor panel and resize it by dragging on the sides. But there's our wide shot. This is going to be my opening shot for my pan and zoom. And then I'm going to do a nice pan and zoom into a close up of the woman on our left. So keyframing is basically creating settings, locking those in as keyframes and then letting the program create the animation between the two different settings. In this case, we're going to set up settings or keyframes for position and scale. To do that, all I need to do is go over here to the top of the keyframe controller and toggle on animation. When I do that, I get these little diamonds along here. These represent these settings for position, scale, rotation, and any other characteristics that are in the motion category of effects. So this is our opening or our start point for our pan and zoom. Now I'll move the playhead out to pretty much the end of the photo and we can create our end point for our pan and zoom. So I'm going to zoom in a bit. I can do that either by moving the slider here or I can just click on this number and drag across it to give me a nice zoom in. So I just clicked on that little number there and dragged across it. So that's a nice zoom in. It's not enough to zoom real fast, but it's enough to give a little bit of motion to the picture, a little bit of life to it. And then I can change its position. I could do that by changing these numbers or dragging over these numbers, but you can also just click on the monitor panel here and drag the picture into position. So this will be our end point. And you notice when I made those changes to scale and position, new keyframes were automatically created here at the position of the playhead in the keyframe controller. And that's really all there is to it. Our keyframe to animation, our pan and zoom, I'm dragging the playhead back to the beginning, and then I'm gonna click play, will be the movement from the initial keyframe here to the slow zoom in on the woman's face there. That's the basic principle of keyframing. You create settings, lock in those settings as keyframes, and you can have as many settings as you'd like, and the program will create the animation between them. I wanna show you one thing real quickly. This is a nearly completed project I've been working on, and if you look along the bottom here, along the music track, you'll notice that there are keyframes for music. Instead of diamond shape, they're round on the timeline, but I've raised and lowered the music so that when the narration comes in, the music will be quieter. I've used keyframes to do that, and if I just click on the timeline here and press the home button to get to the beginning of my timeline, you'll see that I also have keyframes at the beginning of my movie to create my fade in. A key, this is keyframing opacity to create a fade in. So keyframes 
are used throughout any kind of project you're working on. But uh, if you really want to create some cool special effects, some unusual special effects, you just want to learn how keyframing works. Once you master using it, you're going to see applications for it all throughout the program to create some really cool projects and some really cool effects. Hope you'll join me for part seven of our eight part series where we're going to take a look at titling here in our Premiere Elements project.